You want to get to the economic buyer. The problem is you don't know necessarily how to get them to the table, what to say to grab their attention, much less how to get them to actually talk when they come on the demo. On this episode, we're going to give you exactly what you can do and some specific scenarios you can copy and pit play with. I mean, it's straight up like easy. Just swipe it, use it. You're going to love this. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I am so excited to be here with you today. And on this podcast today, we're going to be talking with Mr. Jacob Hahn. Jacob is one of the co-founders over at Sales Doc. You can find out more information about Sales Doc in the episode down below. Now, one of the things that Jacob and his team has done work with hundreds of sales professionals in different organizations in a variety of industries. The thing that they've discovered is that many salespeople have a challenge getting the economic buyer to the table and also getting the economic buyer to participate or be engaged and to talk. He's going to break down what he has done to do so over the years. Now, if you're a first-time listener to this podcast, please subscribe. Also, take this link and share it with somebody else that you care about in the sales world. I promise you they're going to get great benefit from this episode. Now, what I would like for you to do as well is to recognize that this show is designed for two purposes. One, helping you to build pipe. Two, helping you to convert that pipe. If that sounds like you, again, please listen to all the episodes, <laughs> take it, share it, and let's go ahead and evangelize. You can connect with me on LinkedIn as well, Donald C. Kelly. As we dive in, Jacob goes back and reinforce why he's so effective to talk about this particular topic, why it makes sense for him. And then we did break down and go into the three things, how to recognize the economic buyer, what to say to them and get them to the meeting. And then finally, how to get them to actually talk once you have them in a meeting. Check it out. Jacob, welcome to the show. Hi, Donald. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm looking forward to this conversation today. We are going to tackle this idea of how do I get my the real decision makers, economic buyers, the people to the table, but not also get, not only getting them to the table, but getting them to the point where they actually want to talk and getting them to talk. Before I dive into that, I talked about you a little bit in the teaser. Why don't you take a minute and tell us a little bit more about what you do and what makes Jacob so qualified for this conversation today? Yeah. You know, I've been in sales since my 18 and after several experiences uh, together with my friend. We, go for, uh, we set up a company called SalesDoc where we specialize on uh, increasing the performance of the sales team, which is combination of trainings and also combination of redefining the processes mm -hmm. and putting, uh, putting a bit more of structure in, into the sales because the way how we look at it is more about being professional. Be, it's, more, it's closer to the science than to the talent if you want to stay yeah. on the top of the game for a long game for a long time so you so you have to do that yeah and over the past seven years we've consulted uh hundreds of companies uh hundreds of uh sales across the globe and uh, we're discussing with them pretty much uh what uh how to control the process better how to include more of the sale stakeholders better so yeah that's what we do well, again, it sounds like even more perfect uh, why you're why, why you can talk about this topic because you do it all the time. Um, so let's dive in and go straight into it. The three things that and I know from our previous conversation we want to look at is we need to get these economic buyers to to the table and then to get them to talk. I found that I've had the conversations with uh, with prospects, with teams that I work with. They can get in touch with someone, they can connect with them, or they can have that engagement. But when they get them to the table and they start having a conversation, it's like the buyer speaks a different language than the seller. Yep. And the seller is unable to get the buyer to talk and to divulge and get that insight. Three things you said we need to first do is one, we need to learn how to recognize and recognize them or have the recognition. Number two, how to get them to the meeting. And then three, get them to talk. So let's go to the recognition one because that was fascinating. I think uh, listeners can would want to learn a little bit more about that. What did you mean by yeah. recognition exactly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, once you, uh, this is very important to define who is the economic buyer. 
Because very often you, you're in the discussion with the people who tell you, hey, you know, I have a budget, uh, so don't worry about it. The budget is allocated for, for me. But <laughs> are you the one who's signing the paper at the end of the day? And are you the one who can say no if everybody says yes and who can say yes if everybody says no so we can go against everybody? And is that person actually the one who can move the funds from one budget to another budget? And that's usually that's the definition of the economic buyer. So it, it is the somebody who can say, hey, I killed the project A because I need to reallocate the money for the project B because there, there was a salesperson who brought me, who can bring me higher ROI on the project or decrease the risk more or uh, decrease the cost. The same time uh, is the final, final one who, alloc- who can say yes yeah, and uh, he, can, he has the veto right so he can go overrule the company, which is also very important. And uh, yeah, now I forget about the third one, but yeah, I would be repeating yeah. myself. But so we'll go back to that though. Um, <clears throat> recognizing and getting the prospect to. So, r- how do I find that person without insulting somebody else? So, my champion and I are, you know, we started a conversation. They said, yes, there is a budget for this. And then you ask those questions. How do I ask that tactfully? without making my person feel little or without uh, feel like I'm uh, embarrassing them. Yeah. I need to talk to mom and dad. Yeah, you know, you can you can test them out also. The first thing, you can go directly and start asking, okay, so you have the budget, okay, so let's discuss about uh, the paper process, the approval process, how does it go? So... There is a contract. Who's going to sign the contract? Where does it go? If you say, hey, I can move forward. I would like you as my supplier. So what's happened next in the organization? And in very small steps, very detailed steps, you start mapping what's happening in the organization. And you you can realize, hey, this guy actually just, uh, he can say yes. But at the end of the day, it goes on the on the board to get approval. So probably he's not the decision maker. Mm. Uh, or economic decision, decision buyer. He, he might be one of the decision makers which you need, but not the, the one who puts money. Another thing is, if you have economic buyers, they're always always uh, measured on numbers and money. So you can test also your person uh, you talk to, start asking, hey, so what is your, the revenue you're supposed to deliver this year? Where are you right now? How do you want to close the gap? What happens if you don't close the gap? Uh, and based on that, you will realize also, does that person uh, uh, can speak in the language of the business, in the numbers and quantifying the numbers? Or is it more yeah. uh, in a way, I don't know what's going to happen. You should talk to my boss. <laughs> so finding out if that person can speak the language or um, <clears throat> asking the questions that reveal if that's the, if that's the case. Well, I, I like that. And then the other thing I like about it too, I, I'm a very visual person and what I like to do is to project map, so to speak, yeah. so that everyone can see what's expected or what's going to happen. I feel when we have that in place, what, uh, when we start asking them that question, because this is the best practice. This is how we've, this is how many of our clients get onboarded. They might say, I don't know that one. I don't know that one. And then that's where, like you're saying, you can ask them, who is the person that will know that? Can we bring them into the conversation as well? Um, and when you speak from it from a best practice standpoint, I think it makes a difference, right? Because like you said, you work with 100 clients. Um, let's go back to that. And then you you share some authority that you've asked them about those questions when it comes to getting the economic buyer to the table. If I'm on the other side, I'm like, dang, he spoke with, helped 100 clients and he asked them this. He surely knows what works. So therefore, I should listen to him and, uh, and, and his guidance and his recommendation about who else I should bring to the table. And if somebody were like if my doctor told me, yeah, we need to talk to a specialist or, you know, we need to bring somebody else in the conversation. I'm not going to question the doctor like <laughs> yep. she went to school for like 50 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. so thousands oh. of patients every month. <laughs> Yeah, she knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Any other, anything else we need to talk, focus on to recognize? So the recognition is more so recognizing who is the right person, right? Recognizing who is the economic buyer. Is, is that what you would, how you would say it? Yep. And by that, I'm not saying also that the person you talk to is not relevant in the in the conversation. You you just need several stakeholders. Uh, if you do 
small medium business uh, deal in software between 50 to 100k yearly subscription there will be seven eight stakeholders you need to involve if you go higher and you go 300k 500k one million dollars then yeah there, there's going to be 12 15 stakeholders you need to get involved and uh, you need to work with them and for sure you need to get technical approval you need to get your champions to give you some information but also one of the stakeholders is the champion and not aligning with the champion along the way can harm you very badly at the end of the day because if you're not aligning with the champion and you don't talk to the champion uh sorry to the economic buyer and you talk just to, to the champion who tells you hey everything is under control my boss listens to me or i'm the one who manages the whole business here you don't have to talk to anybody oh, anybody goodness. else i'm the one who knows everything then at the end of the day usually these uh, deals uh slip from the pipeline because guess what there is a competition talking to the remaining six people and uh, involving involving the economic buyer in in their sales process. So if you're not in the control of the process, there's somebody else controlling the process, and you should be aware Boom. of that. And that usually, is one like more. The, uh, that's like the the the, cl the 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 click to tweet or nowadays thread <laughs> right there. If you're not talking yeah. to that last line, basically, if you're not talking to economic buyer, somebody else is talking to them in their sales process. But sorry, yeah. I cut you off. Yeah, no, no, it's absolutely, absolutely correct. And uh, well, now I think I lost. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say usually the bad sign is if you have one person telling you I can handle everything. This is a very bad sign, and it's usually not the economic buyer because the economic yeah. buyer, what he usually does or she usually does, is that uh, they have the decision makers around them. They like to spread the decision to the team. It's very, very rarely happens that the econ economic buyer doesn't try to involve the rest of the organization. Mm. Very interesting. All right, let's go to number two. How do I get them to the meeting? I know who those people are. I recognize them now. How do I get those economic buyers to the table? Yeah. So there are se several scenarios. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to cover them. One of the one of them is. Hey, well, you're already in the sales process. You're talking to the person. They say, shit, I, I should get an economic buyer to the meeting. By how, how should I get it? Because there's usually the feeling maybe the, the person I'm talking to wouldn't be happy that I'm trying to uh, bypass the person and talk to the boss of that person. Oh, so for that, I usually recommend two strategies. The first one, as I mentioned at the beginning, start asking the question the person is not able to answer. So if you start asking about the vision of the organization, if you start asking more about what happened if this one not is not delivered, uh, try to quantify the problem and the person is not able to quantify it, then uh, they will start saying, hey, I don't know. And then you can ask them, who knows that? And they can direct you to the person and you get the right to to say, okay, so how about if we include that person in, uh, in the sales process? The second one uh, is... Hmm, just say it bluntly in a way, hey, you know, we spent together three, four months. Uh, uh, I cannot move forward uh, without, I cannot spend more of my resources without moving forward. I don't, it's in my sales process defined or there is a pressure on me from my, from my leadership. And you can say, unless I will meet your, I, I, will, I will meet your leader or your boss or my boss will meet Take your me boss. Take me to your leader. Take me to your leader exactly. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then I will have to just uh, end this um, uh, end this uh, cooperation or this process. It's more like give and get. The same thing. Hey, you would like to get another demo from me, or you would like to get extended trial? Fine, fine by me. I can extend the trial for a month, but I want to talk to your leader. I want to talk to your boss. So always look at it from the perspective: give and get, give and get. This is also one of the issues with the with all of us salespeople. We're natural givers. We'd like to give away the demo for free. We would like to give the access to our customers. And we forget to ask for something in return. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's important. I feel that I've in the past not been afraid of asking for something because I didn't yeah. want to jeopardize. Being the yes man was... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be able to get the deal closed and I don't want to mucky up the water. But you got to sometimes get something uh, before you can get, uh, you know, before you give it everything, everything else away. So it's a very important um, point. Um, so yeah. 
so that's scenario number one. I would love to hear the others. Okay. Well, matter one is uh, you message uh, you message to the economic board, and uh, let's not discuss what was the message about. We'll discuss it later on. But you get a response, and the economic buyer tells you, "Hey, yeah, sounds interesting," and he points out to you to somebody else. And what we as uh, salespeople tend to do is say, "Hey, and don't you want to join the demonstration of the product?" Uh, and then you got either no response or maybe the economic buyer appears on the meeting and then he's or she's bored, like playing on their they phone. They're doing emails. He, <laughs> he doing their emails, yeah, whatever. Checking their their Twitters. Uh, well, what is, the, what is the problem with that? Like they're not interested in features and, uh, and uh, advantages that your product uh, does. They're interested about the impact and the discussion is not for them. So how you should play this one? Just tell him, okay, thanks for that. Go to the person he sends you, then get back to the uh, to the economic buyer and tell him, hey, thank you for putting me uh, through to that person. We discuss ABC and we discuss the impact on your organization. But now I would like to have a chat with you for 20 minutes and understand your perspective, where your business is heading and where you want to push your business. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about features. We're not going to talk about product. I'm not going to mention it. I just want to know your perspective. And this is uh, how you how you keep them engaged. And uh, so, yeah, you you tell them that after the call or prior to the call. Well, you can tell them also prior, like prior to the call. Hey, thanks for putting me through. I'm gonna I'm gonna run. Gotcha. Uh, I'm gonna run. Uh, discover with that person. Then I will get back to you. Because what economic buyers likes as well, if they're if they're in the leadership of a, of a successful company, they love processes because you cannot build a uh, build a, or get a big organization in a chaos. You need to have some processes. So if you tell yeah. them, and that also tells them, hey, I have a process for that. Thank you for that. I will get back to you in a week once I uh, once I do the discovery with the person you sent me. So again, you demonstrate on your side. I have a process in myself, so don't worry. You're led by professional. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I, I think that part makes it feels more um, gives the real gives reality to the position because a salesperson that it, the typical salesperson is just winging it. And she or he, when they jump on a call, when they work with a prospect, they're just going off the seat of their pants and almost in many situations are order takers, but dictating the terms and establishing this is our process. Again, it's mutually accepted because the buyer like you said, they're running a functional organization that's successful and they can't do that without their processes as well. Um, yep. So it, it's good. I like that. Um, keep going. Sorry, you had one more. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, we're then discussing how to how to get right. to the how to get to the, what should be in the message you're, you're, you're writing to economic buyers. There's one rule, like if it is... Uh, if it is already out there, something they expect you to know it. So you shouldn't be mm -hmm. asking them a uh, generic question. You shouldn't be mentioning on, generic man. value value proposition. You have to be prepared for that. And so, you see, that's that right there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you're listening, is the cost of admission. I mean, like that's your that's the benefit of you from you getting here today. Um, if there's one thing I want you to walk away with, it's just that idea there. Like I, I feel so often that. Um, uh, that many people miss it and I have yeah. missed it um, as a sales professional. I didn't, I didn't, I did not do that part right. <laughs> um, you mean the preparation, and, your homework? Yeah. Like it's just, yeah. you, you, it's not, I'm, I don't, I never, I didn't feel like, especially when I was starting off, I didn't feel like um, I did, uh, I, I didn't give enough, I didn't give the right value. Uh, I felt that the mm. features and the benefits could sell itself the things that our offering had, our software had, but not necessarily looking at those things that I can help, best help them with and asking dumb questions like how long you've been in business and some of those. Here I am thinking that I'm unique, but every salesperson asks them those dumb questions. And it's like, bro, you can find yeah. that on our website. It's not my duty to teach you. And that's what I tell them. It's not my duty to teach you how to sell to me. Like it's not, yeah. you should be able to, you should do this. Exactly. I think all of us did the, this, those uh, did those mix, mistakes. Uh, same for me. You get that with more of the experience and exposure and training. Yeah, but absolutely, absolutely.
because you know usually you have if you do that meeting incorrectly you're done the economic buyer wouldn't like to meet you again and say talk to this person i'm out or don't talk to us at all so that being prepared for that uh, always pays off love it so again back once you're prospecting to the to the person so make it super re- relevant uh, read about uh, what you can find about a company. If it is a publicly traded company, there's a lot of information uh, uh, which they need to file, or you can fi- find a lot of information on social media, internet. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Always, uh, always finish the finish or start the message with some questions. So the. I really like whenever I'm doing the prospecting, my first or second second sentence is already the question because I want to spark the interest. Uh, I don't want them to, ex- uh, I, I don't expect them to answer me the question in the message, but I want to keep the, spark the interest that they message me, hey, I would like to meet you because uh, that question will, and was relevant. So they read the rest of the email and they, they got the meeting with me. All the emails or calls should be very direct and uh for sure, bigger company you prospect, uh, you have to more. You have to have more re- relevant references. So, mm. if you're going for the for the telco and you have three biggest telco and you mention, hey, we already work with the second telco, helping uh, achieve this and that. Would you like to know more how we can do that also for you? This is uh, this is relevant for them, especially if they are the third one because they're probably trying to chase the second one. Love it. Um... And again, it shows me from the buyer standpoint that you um, that you, I'm not a guinea pig. Like you're not testing this out with me. Like I can have confidence in your ability to execute yeah. and to do it right. Absolutely. Um, all right. So here's the last piece I want to talk about. Um, I, I think you kind of uh, shared some uh, insights on it as well, but getting them to talk more. Um, you kind of alluded to some of that already, but is, is there something else that we can do to get the economic buyer to give more information to us? Uh, yeah. So the first thing, forget about the features. Forget about saying some complicated words that the only tech people understand or or their specialists. Because once you start saying about the, once you start mentioning those complicated words and um, sounds a little bit too technical. They will send you to the technical people. <laughs> you say, hey, that's nothing for me. That's too much of product. Okay, so here is Bob and he's going to talk to, uh, to you about that. So try to keep it in the, into the business perspective. But also, like once you get the economic buyer on the meeting, uh, try to look at it from the perspective of, of the economic buyer. What, they, what do they want to do? They want to either increase revenue, decrease costs, or make them more predictable. Or they want to decrease the risk of decision making, of running business, of not achieving the quota. And your question should go in this direction. So forget about your product. You want to understand their business. You want to understand their top three priorities, which they have on the plate. And either you find a way how to align with those top three priorities and you get into the business or you don't. And then you, well, then this is not the prospect for you. Mm. Because... Very often there is some misconception that uh, you have to be able to create the need in sales. It's not like that. It's more about, imagine you're in the position of uh, economic buyer of CEO of some company. You have three big problems which you have to solve and then they keep you awake during the night. And then there is a salesperson who's like in his thirties and start asking you and tell, I start telling you, hey, instead of those three, you have fourth and fifth problem. <laughs> or you, you, you have second salesperson who is a little bit smarter and it comes to you and tells you, okay, you have three problems. You know, actually I can help you out to solve first and second problem. So which of them would you like to meet more? I guess. I want the, the one the that already one. knows I'm my problem. <laughs> yeah. Or, or the ones who already know the problem. Yeah. But yeah, it's about aligning with, with the problems. Yeah. Better think always tries to quantify it. Because uh, they're used to work in numbers. They used to calculate business cases. And also you want to know the impact uh, which you can eventually bring to the organization. And also mm. it tells you a bit of urgency and try to understand the urgency of what's in the organization. Because my favorite question is always, 
why is that happening right now? Why it didn't happen last year? Why, why you cannot postpone it for the next year? So I want to understand yeah. the underlying reason of why you have this need or why this is, a, this is the priority. And if you put those things together, then, uh, yeah, then you, you are able, firstly, you get the, the economic buyer quite well engaged because you have the mm -hmm. business discussion. For sure, like you're not, you don't have to be such a high rank if this is a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, but he, he or she considers you as a, hey, this person is relevant, he understands me, uh, he can talk about my problems and he can uh, bring me the solutions uh, which can make me more successful. So I'm going to make a business with this one. And if I move to another company, I take that person also with me. Oh, yeah, by far. <laughs> it's a great seller at that point. This is awesome, man. Um, so many great insights today. I, I got a, a slew of notes. And I know in the show notes, we're going to have some of those takeaways. I would love to hear if there's one major thing you want folks who are listening to this episode to walk away with, Jacob. What's that one major piece of insight? That I should mention? Yeah. Uh, can I do two? Let's go with two. <laughs> okay. So once you get the uh, economic buyer on the call, forget about the features. Talk about benefits, talk about them, understand, uh, understand uh, their perspective. No features. Uh, you can sell it almost without knowing the product. This, uh, this is one of the things. And the other one, always try to control the sales process. Because if you're not in the process of the sales process, there's always the competition who can be uh, who can be talking to the people you don't talk to. Love this, man. Jacob, thank you so much for taking the time to come on our show today. Thanks for your insights and for your wisdom. If listeners want to get in touch with you and to learn about all the cool things you're doing, how did it go about connecting? Well, uh, they can reach us on salesdog.com uh, or connect me on LinkedIn. That's J-A-K-U-B-H-O-N. Uh, and uh, you find me, I guess there's not many people with my, my name from SalesDog. And uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna run a webinar actually on the 2nd of August. Uh, it's, uh, where, and the, the webinar is going to be about how to talk to economic buyers. So uh, we'll expand this topic a little bit farther. Love it. Um, cool. Get us a link to that. We'll put that in the show notes so folks can get access or sign up for that um, webinar or get access to the landing page. Absolutely. I will. Jacob, thank you, man, for the insights. Thanks for coming on the show today. Donald, thank you very much for the podcast. Hey, that was Jacob Hahn. I'm telling you, man, that last point, I, I love it. The buyer should not be doing your work for you. They shouldn't be feel obligated that they need to teach you some of those things about the organization that you can find on the web. You got to get speak the language that they that they look for. And I love what Jacob also talked about when it comes to the economics and numbers. Like get the quantify the information and don't talk about the features. Talk about the business effect that comes from the features. If you can do that, come on, money in the bank all day long. Jacob, thanks for coming on the show. Go ahead and check out Jacob. Also, their upcoming webinar, we have a link down in the show notes below, as well as his, uh, his LinkedIn connection, uh, so you can chat with him and, and get connected to him. If this, again, your first time listening to our show, please subscribe. Tell one other human being about the show and help them to subscribe as well. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. We have an amazing sponsor, amazing folks helping us out with these podcasts. You can go ahead and find their information down below. As always, I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. I want you to build three to five X your sales pipeline. And I want you to close twice as many deals. And we're here to help you with that. Find how we can do so in the show notes. I want you to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things. Thanks so much for watching.